The following is a presentation of iRacing on PTR TV. We'd like to thank all of our channel partners for their support. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. In northern Ontario, Canada lies a small town of 39,000 people called Bowmanville. Within such town has a road course that is two and a half miles long, ten turns across, and has been in existence since 1961. The track known as Mossport has held different levels of motorsport and tonight holds the American Muscle Series. Welcome everyone to PTR TV for tonight's coverage of the American Muscle Series as we are now on the back end of the season race number 9 of 12 here in their season 6 campaign. Gonna be myself Corey Silva in the booth and in the production truck here ready to give you guys all of the calls so um, Andre, I mean, this season has not let us down one bit. We've seen some great racing. We've seen some new winners. We've seen some frustrated guys. Well, this is a narrow, short track relatively. So 40 plus cars, this is going to be a hoot. Oh, yeah, this track is a riot. I know that uh, the NASCAR Truck Series used to go here for quite some time, and I think those were some of the most controversial races in that series. Even to this day, people talk about the events that were put on here, and as far as sports cars and muscle cars, they put on great shows here as well. It's just a track that accommodates that. You've got some heavy braking zones. You've got some fast winding sections. And like you said, very narrow. So uh, the corner that I'm looking at, though, Corey, is the last corner, that sharp right-hander, 90-degree corner, right before the start-finish line. As close as these drivers have been on the last lap in almost every race this year, that corner is almost sure to provide some drama tonight. Yeah, as you see here on the track map, you will come out of, well, let's uh, fix that. You'll come out of this direction, left-hander, you just get all the way back to the left side of the track and then cut here for the inevitable run to the checkers. And then uh, Barney will have that view. I mean, we've seen uh, the fight actually happen right off yonder here. Uh, we saw that happen between, I think, John Hunter and Cole Custer, if my uh, terrible memory, memory does serve here. But uh, these guys just finished their driver's meeting. So now uh, a minute or so of uh, practice is availed to them and then we'll start our qualifying lineup but um, I do have uh, the privy information actually we could still show it right here on the ticker left side of your display this is the practice lineup Andre and the person I want to note down there is Chuck Labano uh, in that number 113 he for a brief moment was actually fifth on this practice lineup that is by far the best we have seen of an AM driver I know your favorite driver uh, Charles Hosea um, oh, he's back there in 44, so I'm not sure if he was late to practice or uh, if this ain't his cup of tea. Um, you know, as the resident Hosea Truther, I'm going to tell you right now, he's just sandbagging right now. He doesn't want to show uh, anybody what cards he's got just yet. He'll, he'll be faster in the race, but yeah, Chuck Labano had a really good lap, and even now, he's still only seven tenths of a second off of Euro Nam. Uh, all of these drivers in the top 15 being in the minute 29 bracket, which is insanely close between everybody uh but he absolutely has a competitive ride i think tonight's race with how close these lap times are is really going to come down to who's going to get aggressive who's going to be willing to make the moves there's plenty of passing opportunities on this track you just have to reach out and take them yeah right here being one of them that is uh turn number five moss corner uh which is kind of a double apex hairpin style turn and that leads you on to the mario andretti straightaway uh which is anything but straight there as it uh twists and turns kind of going uphill to the latter end of the lap here but that is the end of the practice timer so now uh we will start the countdown and head ourselves into 10 minutes of qualifying uh which with lap times of about a minute and a half around here uh if we do some very rudimentary mathematics probably could get about four or five flyers if you uh 
if you play your cards right. Yeah, they got plenty of opportunities to try and post a time. They're going to need them as close as the competition was. You're going to have to be trying to get a matter of hundreds of a second out of your best lap here. And you can see they're wasting no time trying to get as many laps as they can. 20 seconds in, multiple cars pulling out of the pits. And I would say by the time they get to the start-finish line, the tires should be pretty well heated up, Corey. we got a lot of uh, tight corners to get the cycle through these tires. And the out lap going to be tough. You don't really want to tackle these braking zones on cold tires but once they get there they'll be all right yeah they should be just fine see here now i'm kind of moving back and forth a little bit but while uh you know every these guys are doing their out lap it is a good opportunity for us to describe a formidable cause that the league is racing for the american muscle series is also racing to raise awareness for the american society for suicide prevention the afsp saves lives and brings hope to those affected by suicide they are a voluntary health organization that gives those affected by suicide a nationwide community empowered by research, education, and advocacy to take action against this leading cause of death. Together, we can stop suicide. Funny, Andre, how I read that a lot smoother when I'm not in a rush to do it. I probably should have read it earlier in the broadcast this whole time. But look at Iro Nam. He's using that Mario and Jetty straightaway as a slalom course. Uh, that is not... Well, it's not banned. That's the best way to do it because the, the scrutiny system won't get you on that. But that little bit of heat uh, will help him out. Other drivers on circuit here. Here's Dahan Otut here coming off the back end of the circuit. Here's the calamity corner that you were speaking of, uh, making that right-hander. And this will be Dan's starting lap for his lap number one of Q. So he is out and away. We'll see how he handles it. A little bit of a... Uh slip out of the rear end going into the first corner and that will happen uh, under these braking zones seems like he's struggling just a little bit that car is going all kinds of sideways now, with the rear end now we've talked to dan a lot um in, in chats and you know he has really embraced the name of dahan that i uh, deemed him in race web we've never discussed his photo i don't know what if, if, is he really that large of a fellow or is is he pretending to be pregnant for some inexplicable reason these are the questions that we ask here on the channel um you know he he could be pregnant or maybe he just ate a nice big bowl of lemonades and uh you know he's just doing the you know the post meal belly rub uh, you know <laughs> trying to get that settled out before the race but uh, there is Nick Beaver, I believe, and a few other drivers. That double right-hander is going to be so tricky for these guys. It's one thing to do that when you're by yourself here in qualifying. And you've got, you know, 40-some-odd other Mustangs, maybe even 50, trying to get through the double apex downhill, no less. That's going to be quite the trick. Yeah, that will be a good passing zone, but also something that drivers will be starting to, uh, you know, put themselves in precarious positions on. Now, the time should be rolling in any second now. Here comes Dan, or Dahan, as i getting my own nickname for him wrong. Uh, Solar sick at 29.9, McGrew at a 30.7. Here they are, come rolling on in there. Labano back there. Pe Kevin Parrish at a 30 flat. Nom at a, exactly a 30 flat. Uh, you can see Jay Bass rolling in with a good time. So only one driver off the opening get-go uh, gets himself into the 29-second bracket. Here comes Phil Keck, the Taco Mobile, uh, just outside that 29-second uh, barrier at a 30.36 there. So he is fairly close. Here comes Reese Gardner in the 94. He's going to complete a lap. We'll see where he stacks up. Do we see him on the board? I don't see him. Maybe it, uh, that must have been an invalidated lap because it did register, but uh, did not go on the board. So perhaps he got an off track, but luckily plenty of time for him to avail. Uh, here comes Charles Hosea. He's actually just starting this lap, so he'll have a ways to go. Take a look at some other guys. Antoine Sederski there. Looks like he missed the apex on the back end of Moss Corner there, so that will uh, detriment him. Fabian's wire. He's closing in on the end of his lap. Let's take a look and see what he could do. Remember, he won Detroit. Um, probably like race four or five, I believe that was. Coming off the final corner to the stripe. 30 flat. That will put him probably third, I believe. Yes, indeed. So good lap there for Fabian. Yeah, he's going to be right behind Iro Nam. The top spot still Matt Solarsic holding on to it just barely half of a second. 
uh, over Eero Nam. And look at that. Kevin Paris jumps to second on the board as well, 129.61. And if Solarsic had not improved his lap time, that would have been pole. So very competitive there. Still following along with Charles Hosea. He's at about a minute and nine heading through the final portion of the track. Again, the time to beat right now is going to be a minute 29.5. Highest Adam, am Matt being Solarsic. Labano, but oh, oh, Matt Thompson highest am at a thirty point four. So that would be who uh, Jose is racing right now. And he may get there. Look at this as he's coming to the stripe. It's going to be ah uh, thirty point seven, just barely going to miss out on it. Down to P twenty for him, but still on the top end of the field if you consider it in that context. There, Kevin Parrish, he is fourth on the board now. The tires have their heat in them. These guys are starting to uh, get those times into the twenty nine second bracket. Uh, again, Matt Solar sick there, but uh, very quickly while qualifying is going on, we'll still keep a gander of it. But let's go over our point standings, um, and it's definitely getting tight now. You have Eero Nam still leading. Again, this is accounting for a drop week. But in second place, only by six. Remember, uh, with last week's win, uh, Jack Sanchez only six back. Then you have Fabian's wire, four behind him. Pretty tight between the two. Matt Solar, sick and Malone, fourth and fifth. And then um, even back to uh, seventh, all above 200 points. Uh, Evan Hoopjock there rounding up that. And then we have our amateur standings. Chuck Labano still leading the way. Mike Thompson creeping ever closer with 128 points. Matt Thompson going to be third place, 119. Charles Hosea jumps up to fourth all the way from eighth, uh, I believe, last week after his uh, solid finish. Dave Blair going to be P5. Then you got Mark Royce, Levi Powell, Jeff Andrus, Greg Hartman, and Aaron, that face Bray, running out the top 10 with 64 points. And it's that face. <laughs> That is quite the profile picture. I think that's I think that's what the girl in the pit in Silence of the Lambs probably saw on like a daily basis when he was lowering the bucket down. I could just uh, No, I, I don't want to roast on him too hard because I could just think of some scenarios here that would be entertaining to say, but uh I will play on the nice card, something that I don't do too often here. Aero Nam. Um, he's up by three tenths of a second here on Solarsic, currently on another flyer. Here comes Luis Henriquez on the back straightaway. They should finish their laps um, in very close order here because you have uh, a little bit further ahead on the straightaway. Luis Henriquez here, so we'll take a look where he is. Where is uh, Fabian Zwire? He just completed a lap. It does not better him there. He's at an eight. That keeps him down there. I believe it is in the fourth spot. Uh, but let's see if Luis can do something to better that fourth position, and he will not because he will go straight to pit lane. So he is going to come down pit road. I don't know if he's calling it quits for the session. Or they they do have two minutes left. Jack Sanchez should get to the stripe just in time to get another one in. He's at a minute 15 now. It's going to be close coming through the final section of the track into Calamity Corner, and he's going to go into the pits as well. He's going to call it quits. That is a narrow pit road entry. Yeah. I've never noticed how narrow that is until we went on board. Never really thought about that. Yeah. Uh, thoughts and prayers with uh, Matt Malone if he has to get into that pit road. But uh, in the meantime, we do saw some drivers finishing out their final laps. Taco Phil uh, going to try to improve. He's got the... Uh, <laughs> Taco scheme still rocking it. Uh, I believe the correct scheme as well. For some reason, the first few races, uh, his scheme, uh, Trading Paints, did not uh, like was, to yeah, show. Yeah, it was but... still a taco car. Just delivery was not intended. And uh, we wanted to make sure because he does have some family that does tune in. And his family uh, got a little confused because they expected one car and it was another. So I always make sure just before we finish our countdown screen to give one more refresh of the old Trading Paints, our paint sharing software. And uh, that will uh, allow them to be where they should be. Chuck Labano, he is trying to better a 12th spot. And he will not do it. He did manage to get into the 29, so he will be the highest um, of the AM drivers there, which is pretty impressive uh, to be just outside of the top 10 for the amateur classic. And I know you always tout uh, Charles Hosea as the one that is kind of the leader of that campaign, but... Uh, Chuck Labano, who has been on the points lead for quite some time. Um, you know, we're going to start giving him a little bit more credit ourselves. 
Oh yeah, Chuck Labano absolutely uh, is very talented, and I think he is among the top of the class here in amateur, and, and it's proven by the fact that he's in the points lead. His qualifying has always been kind of a, a trouble for him. It seems like he qualifies a little bit further back, and then he races his way forward. This week he doesn't have to do that, because that's one of his best qualifying efforts all year, and I'm curious to see what kind of results he can get now that he doesn't have quite as much traffic to contend with. This could be a phenomenal day for the points leader to extend that gap and kind of slow the, uh, the bleeding there for everybody catching up. But uh, as we head to the grid, Iro Nam did take the pole, dethroned Matt Solarsic just barely, ran a 129-343. Reese Gartner going to be P3 with Luis Henriquez jumping up to fourth. The four car in fourth. Five position is going to go to Fabian Zwire. Randall McGrew is going to be P6. Seven and eight going to Kevin Parrish and Matt Malone, respectively. Running out the top 10, it is going to be Taco Phil, Phil Keck, and Jack Sanchez, P10. 11th finds Neil Kemp and then Chuck Lovano. We just mentioned him. He's going to be rolling off from the 12th position. This will be a home track being the Canadian native. Uh, Nick Beaver, he's not, he didn't match his starting spot here today. He's down in 13th in that number 10 car with Evan Hoopchuk in that 14th spot. We'll spare him the, uh, the alternative music jokes here today. Ian Lane in 15th with Matt Thompson. A good start for him rolling off in the 16th spot. Luke Sedenga in 17th. Ed Sancinelli, it's a good start for him there in 18th. 19th, you find Buckholz and then David Moore out of uh, out of whatever state NV is. Nevada in 20th. There we go. That was difficult. <laughs> P21 going to go to Dan Ott, a.k.a. Dahan 2 We got Charles Hosea, P22. 23rd goes to Brandon Brush. Mike Thompson to his outside in 24th. P25 finds Jay Bass alongside Mark Royce in 26th. P27, Matthew Guzenda. Antoine Seredsky is going to be at P28. 29 and 30 goes to Jeff Andrus and Mike Nickham. And our next 31 through 40th, Jay Little and then Aaron That Face Bray. Then we have Stefan Price and then Brandon Smith in 34th. 35th is Adam Freese with Freddie Weaver. He's not last. He is in 36th. Greg Hartman in 37th with a Merle Eshman. He won a couple of our 42th awards. He is going to be in 38th here on the evening with Scott Brooks 39th. And routing at our top 40 is Dave Blair out of Arizona. Outside of the top 40, Levi Powell is going to be P41. He's got Tom Went to his outside. 42nd position. Ken Estep is going to be 43rd. Jonathan Golden rolling off 44th. 45 goes to Greg Brockway. John Casey takes 46th. 47 shotgun on the field is going to be Ryan Bevel in the 107. That is going to be our grid here on the evening. 47 cars strong here. I think our lowest grid on the evening all, all, all the season was about 43 cars. So uh, we're back up there closing in on 50. But on a track this small, 50 is going to seem like a lot. Our weather conditions here from Bowmanville, Ontario, Canada. 66 in the air with an 84 degree track temp. So that's right around, you know, kind of what we would expect. Nothing too egregious there. 430 sim time. It is on the verge of fog here. 94%. It was to rain but it cannot uh, but a 15 mile an hour wind here and again dry conditions due to the nature of what we're allowed to do and we are less than a minute away from the green light going on and unleashing 47 mustangs into this tight winding circuit so we'll see exactly what kind of start these drivers get the drivers in the back again they're going to have it rough just like last week there's a bend in the straightaway some of these drivers are going to have to make a complete right hand oh. turn before uh -oh. they can even get well, green but well, we've Andre, got some yeah uh oh that, that's up front reese gardner usually he's in the middle of the pack but he has a great starting spot tonight and he's down there in fourth but he's going to be blinking in front of the field so that's going to be something that these guys will uh be very scared of and uh, I didn't give a strobe warning here uh, before the broadcast, but perhaps I should announce that if you do have uh, any epilepsy, you probably should not watch this broadcast. But here we are getting ready for the green flag to fly. These guys are going to get ready to roll. It's going to be Eero Nam in command of the field. 47 Mustangs strong. Let's go racing here in Canada. And they are scrambling for position. This does not look very cordial on the straightaway. Right into a downhill right-hander. We're going to be two, three, maybe even four wide, a little bit further back. We're going to keep our eyes open for any plumes of smoke that may signify issues. But so far, so good. Everybody getting down through the first right-hander. You can see the tail end of the field there coming up as well. 
and they've got it mostly sorted out single file up front it's a little bit further back that you're seeing these battles continue as they head downhill into this double right apex pulling up the timing and scoring Eero nam still leading the way solarsic p2 but so far, Corey, I think lap one's going all right. Yeah, everyone got down Clayton Corner, that long downhill left-hand corner, very arduous, very terrifying there, because if you go wide, you go right into the grass and usually right into the wall here. We don't have the runoff pavement that has been added um, in the real world here. But coming down the Mario Andretti straightaway for the first time here on the evening, that'll lead us down into turn number eight, which starts our S's sequence and that will finish our lap here. So this is a good slipstream opportunity. For what it's worth, Andre, we know the slipstream is not night and day in these cars, uh, but it can definitely help you out if you get a poor run off the straightaways. Yeah, it absolutely can help you out just a little bit. Uh, and the straightaways are, I think, just going to be long enough for that to come into effect. But we're going to be coming to complete lap one. Eero Nam has maintained the lead throughout the first circuit of this track, and he is going to take that start finish line in p1 matt Solarsic though applying some pressure in that zero two machine he's going to ride that curb right up against pit road wall sling it out to the outside curb he is using every inch of the track he can to try to get an advantage wait for an opportunity to pass Eero now maybe force him into a bit of a mistake here but again Eero great at driving defensively you can see the sticker on the back of the car don't kill the bird i don't know what it says don't on the kill bottom, the bird but i think that gets the message across don't kill the bird. The bird is the word. I guess I probably should have put that one on the soundboard here. But here we come, coming down into uh, turn number three here. Quebec Corner, and that oh, that camera is useless. Quebec Corner, then turn number four leads us into Moss Corner. Again, double apex, right-hander, kind of a hairpin, but a little bit longer than a normal hairpin would be, and leads us on to that back straightaway. I do see some triggers here in my back end. I'm trying to see if anybody has any issues here. That is Kevin Buckholz. He was very close to who? Hoopchock there exiting uh, Moss Corner. Thought he was going to turn him there, but he was just trying to get a good solid run. Uh, but everybody doing well. Actually, one issue here, Andre. And take a guess at who it is. It's our it's our Captain Pit Road here, Matthew Malone. Oh, no. Early issues for Matt Malone. And, I mean, I didn't see the very beginning of that, but that looked like it may have just been... A self-spin. We'll take another look at the BTR TV replay. He's got Jack Sanchez right behind. Well, it's a little bit of a wide the, angle. Yeah, he the missed the corner. apex by a whisker there. Oh, he, yeah, they and both just drove into the dirt, and he hit the end of the tire wall. That was entirely on his own mistake there. Yep, just drove it in a little bit too deep, and once those left side tires completely jumped over the curb, the grass just pulled him in. Uh, I don't think there was really anything he could do, and we're having more issues. I think that is going to be, is that Nickum? I can't quite tell. Uh, getting yeah. a little bit of a uh, off-track excursion. Yeah, well, all is well, though. Nothing uh, too, uh, too wrong with that, but... Um, I do see something with Evan Hoopchuk as well here uh, that may have been a problem, but it couldn't have been that big of a problem because he's still in that 16th spot, hasn't fallen too far back here. But uh, this is probably the biggest snake that I think we've seen all season, Andre. We've seen uh, different two, three car packs. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, big separations, but this is really just one long snake here. If I keep this static shot here on the... Um, on the end of the back straightaway, you could just see there's really not a defined gap uh, between these guys. It is one just continuous line of Mustangs here across this entirety of the circuit. Yeah, we're not seeing a huge breakaway yet, and I think it's those heavy braking zones keeping everybody together. Um, they're not really having an opportunity to get any high-speed sections to try to carry momentum and split away from each other. As soon as they get that momentum, they're back into a braking zone, which um, for me personally, when I'm behind somebody going into a braking zone, uh, I feel like I, I can use them as a bit of a rolling marker and just kind of emulate their line. So kind of keeping these guys compact. Eero Nam, two-tenths of a second over Matt Solarsic on board now with Reese Gartner in the 94. He had that uh, issue in qualifying where one of his laps was not uh, counted due to some sort of discretion, may have been an off-track excursion. But uh, that reminds me, Corey, there is a driver in this league, and I can't remember which driver it is, uh, who thus far has gotten 0x all year. This track may be their biggest rival because uh, I think off-tracks are going to 
come fairly Ooh, frequently at this so oh boy and who is that yeah. i think that is kemp perhaps uh luke sedenga in the 99 of neil kemp indeed they were side by side down four into five and uh it looks yeah, like kemp on his way back one. yeah he got forced on the outside he had the preferred line in the first corner but then it had that little bit of a switch back uh, and did it we put ever him the figure outside, out he... what that car is is that the pizza car i think it's pizza i mean it, it could be a lot of things all right, let's, uh, I mean, the question is in the air now, so we must find some kind of closure to this situation. The cameras here that I have are not on my uh, favorite list here, so I do apologize for all the jump cutting, but yeah, it looks like a very zoomed in slice of pepperoni pizza. So if you're a pepperoni pizza fan, uh, perhaps you should be a Neil Kemp fan. You may uh, ha find yourself a, a friend of there in that number 99 vehicle there. But top, front of the field, nothing too much going on. But back of the field, we do still have everybody uh, all over the place. Somebody there, I think that may have been Mike Thompson. Uh, getting a little agricultural work done there. He was a little bit wide on that front straightaway. Matthew Guzenda in front of him. And to bring up our amateur class, Chuck Labano, he is still the top dog over there. He is P11. His closest competitor within class is uh, is indeed uh, Matt Thompson back in the 17th spot. So he's got a healthy lead for the amateur class. He does have a bit of a challenge from Luke Sedenga, who's been kind of working his way through the field. We just saw him work his way around Ian Lane and Neil Kemp, uh, and now he is on the bumper of Labano. We'll see oh, how Beaver. that battle sorts out. Oh, boy. Beaver on the outside. By Labano. He's going to be an angry Beaver if that uh, if that kind of racing continues. But Labano, i tell you what, he's got a lot of speed in that machine, and he's about to break into the top 10. There you go. That is P10. He's bringing Sedenga in tow. This is going to be a good night for for uh, Mr. Labano. All right, we got the Daytona bump draft, and look at Sedenga. He's going to go two for one. He used the slipstream, and now he's at the end of the straightaway here. I thought he was going to take a look to the inside of him there, but these S's are very high speed, so it is very difficult to get yourself in a good position because as soon as you get yourself where you want to be, you're on the wrong side of the track for the other side of it. But here comes Beaver. He's trying to get a whisker to the inside, exiting White's corner there. The final corner cannot do so as we start another lap. And again, this is where Matt Malone had his issues going a little bit wide here. And these guys keeping it on circuit. And this is one of the most difficult corners, Andre. Turn number two. You can see if you go wide, you're downhill. It's kind of blind. And if you go wide, all that grass, that's mad, scary grass. And it puts you right into the tire wall if you screw it up. Yeah, it's a little bit off camber, so it's going to pull you completely out of the circuit and towards that tire wall. You do not want to mess with it. Try to stay within the track limits. Maybe don't push it too much. There's some sections of this track where you can get a little bit aggressive with track limits, push the car, but uh, not so much uh, right there. But as we go on board with Jack Sanchez, he is right behind Taco Phil in the 08. They're not dogs Sanchez. today. They are not dogs today. Uh, I believe that is still Triple oh, H. Oh, he missed the shift. Oh, he missed the shift, and that's why you saw him lose so much speed there. He got it stuck in gear. That's the exact reason I don't drive these things, because I cannot figure out the transmission in them, and I always get it stuck in neutral. I miss a shift, and that just cost him the opportunity to go for a spot and actually lost a spot uh, to Mr. Parrish there. We're going around the outside through the S's. Yeah, I think Parrish is going to get it right here on the switchback. He's got the bottom groove. That's going to put him up one position over Sanchez. And again, that's an uncharacteristic mistake. We have not seen Jack miss too many shifts this year. So uh, maybe that tells you how aggressive he's getting. He's so focused on looking his way up through the grid. He's making a few mistakes here and there. And this is a little bit lower than we're used to seeing Jack running. Uh, it's not that ninth is particularly bad. It's, it's really good. But... Uh, Jack has been a driver that, you know, if he's not in the top three, you're a little bit surprised all year. So I don't know if this track just isn't working with him, something he's not too comfortable with or, you know, what's going on. But uh, we'll see if he can pick it up. We are only 10 minutes into this event. Uh, he's got probably another 10 minutes before the pit sequence, which is guaranteed to shuffle things up a little bit. And then another 20 minutes after that to try and get things done. Yeah, 20 minutes left here in the session. It did have a sound issue, so I do apologize for that. There was an OBS update, and it uh, threw off some settings. So thank you for letting me know. I wish I had known sooner. I didn't catch that as I would have hoped to, but all should be well now for the remainder of this broadcast. You can see that is Dan Ott there with Charles Hosea. Hosea not doing uh, Hosea things here uh, as he's back there in the mid-20s here. Let's take a look at our 42th award. Merle Eshman currently holding that, our 
42nd place driver on the evening. He, I think he won two of them. And again, it's not an award you want to win, but if you like to talk to us, well, it definitely can't hurt. So uh, only driver out of the race being Mr. Malone himself. After that issue, he did uh, fare off of turn number two, but Aero Nam still leading. And it just makes you wonder, you know, we hear all the time, Andre, that the leader is saving fuel. The leader is slowing down the pace. So you never quite know, is Solar sick as fast as he appears to be? Is he being held up or is Nam just running 80%? These are the things that we always guess upon every single week. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but I think in this instance, there's really not a whole lot of reason uh, to hold back. You're not really saving tire, you're not really saving fuel. So I think it's just kind of naturally they're very close in pace. And we saw that in practice and qualifying. The lap times were near identical among the top 15. So um, it's going to be hard to break away, especially when you have the slipstream into the mix. The thing is, Solarsic is struggling to find an opportunity to get around. We've talked about Ironam being the, uh, the kidney stone of the league. He's just so hard to pass. Uh, it, it is very difficult when you've got somebody as cool-headed as he is. He can have two, three drivers on his rear bumper filling up that mirror, and he just he doesn't shake he doesn't he doesn't panic he doesn't make any mistakes he just hits his lines runs his laps and says look if you want to be behind me if you want to try to make a pass do it but uh, he's just not bothered this little gaggle of cars here is uh looking pretty interesting as we go down into a breaking zone that's the chat's favorite driver nick beaver leading this pack then you got the 99 neil kemp uh, as well as ian lane in the 43 these drivers battling it out into the final corner here and it looks like the 43 is going to have to concede yeah the difficult part of that last corner andre is that you don't have time you make one s you make a left hand corner and then the final corner being a right but that straightaway in between is just so narrow that you really can't get the car back to the side of the track you want so if you're side by side you're basically guaranteed contact there uh, which is rather difficult. I tell you, someone there, that is uh, Kevin Buckles. He was very wide in Clayton Corner there, which is very scary, but it worked out for him. Kept himself, kept himself, keeps himself even on track there in that 15 spot. A little bit further back, you have uh, Evan Hoopchunk. Talked about him a little bit earlier. Matt Thompson in our amateur class. He is trying to close in on Chuck Lobano. Uh, Chuck is... I'm trying to see how many seconds, about, about three seconds ahead is a big, oh, big gaggle there. Who is that that popped the curb? I think that was David Moore. Uh, that was some curb hopping there exiting the hairpin. Yeah, some of these curbs on this track I've noticed are pretty violent. When these drivers get two tires on the other side, it kind of pulls the car around, kind of unloads the suspension. And uh, if you're not ready for it, it'll throw you for a loop. These guys have done a good job managing it so far for the most part. Um, but it is something you got to keep in mind. Now we're watching uh, back to the battle for the lead. Luis Enriquez still holding on to third place. Fabian Zwire drifting off into the distance just a little bit. He's about uh, three tenths of a second uh, or so back from Solarsic and Enriquez. But oh, it is a little foggy, uh, huh? Way. Yeah, it is getting a little bit foggy. Maybe it's those uh, wildfires. But in the meantime, the number four just holding on. He's watching these drivers. I think he may be. A little bit quicker at the moment because he remember Corey he was a little bit further back just a few laps ago and he is now fully a part of this battle we do have a report of an issue here this is Jonathan Golden who uh, that is in Moss Corner oh uh, did he go wide on his own or did he have a little bit of help here uh, we will take a look at the PTRT replay and find oh, out oh he just flew to the R. Kelly. I think he asked if he could fly there, hopped over the curb, and... Oh, and then again. Yeah, good, just for good measure, but didn't actually hit anything. Uh, just lost a bunch of track position, and through the forest and through the trees, he's back on track. I think shotgun on the field. Yes, indeed, he is. So, not too much in the way of, a of issues here on the ending, other than Matt Malone. Really haven't seen too, too many issues. Uh, that was the only actual wreck we've seen on the evening, but uh, back to the front, and... Eero, again, just kind of keeping that gap to within a car length or two. It seems as though they each have their own separate parts of the track where their success levels do swap places. Falls back to about a half a second, does Solarisic, and then other sides of the track manages to get right to that rear bumper. So uh, we'll see how that does fare in the long haul. Of course, we still do have the pit stop, uh, which 
probably won't happen for another 10 minutes or so. And uh, speaking of pit stops, we do have one, David Moore. I think he pitted roughly out of the 20th spot. So uh, someone trying a little bit of an alternative strategy. And we got somebody behind him as well. Yeah, can't quite make Mike out. Mike I think that is, perhaps. Yeah, so yes, it be, is. So maybe, maybe these drivers just trying to make sure they cycle out into a clean track. Well, they don't have anybody in front yeah, of them now. That's a good you idea. Mentioned the long snake. I mean, these guys weren't getting much separation. If they think they can pit, get out in a clear track, and make faster laps than if they were following somebody, uh, that could definitely help them cycle a little bit forward. Yeah, it could. As you can see, a little bit of space forming here. As it can, it's very windy here, as you can see by these trees here, swaying off on that back straightaway. A little bit of spacing to be had, and um, I'm trying to look at our overall gaps here. There still is roughly... Uh, Golden is the last one on the lead lap right now, and he's still about 30 seconds from being lapped. So uh, there is that bubble, and I do think if you pit, you're probably going to be in the middle of the pack if you're up front. So uh, maybe for a driver mid-pack, um, if you get all the way to the back, that might give you a little bit more time to, you know, race your own pace here. But uh, racing your own pace is not what they're doing up front. They are racing um, quite hard for this position, and it is still working in the favor of Eero. Now, maybe costing them a little bit more fuel, um, but we'll see how that does fare. But look at through Clayton Corner here, almost to the back bumper. Oh, this whisper... Well, uh, just a whisker separating the two of them heading down turn two there. Now we're into turn number three, Quebec corner, and now we'll lead ourselves down into the hairpin. Yeah, he is not holding back. I think if he has an opportunity to pass, he's absolutely going to take it. This isn't a matter of him just being patient. I don't think he really wants to be in second um, and down into this heavy downhill section. You got to think the elevation change definitely playing a factor in the handling of these cars for these drivers. Now through Moss Corner. Seems like the separation is kind of coming out of nowhere up front, Corey, because we were just following along with Luis Henriquez, and he was right there with Solarsic. He was tailing in third, and now he's about a second plus back with Fabian Zwire. So I'm not exactly sure what happened. If he made a bit of a mistake, and that's where he lost oh the time, goodness. or if he cooked the tires. You know, maybe the tire wears a little bit more than what we're used to, and all that driving to get up front like that heat him up a little bit too much. Yeah, that could very well be the case, because he, as you said, he was right there. Now a second and a half back is Henriquez here. And I'm starting to notice a trend here, Andre. So in our e-car races on Thursdays, I have noticed a grotesque amount of fog, and I think those are realistic weather situations. And here we have here a grotesque amount of fog. So I'm starting to think there's something a little bit borked uh, with the weather system here, because this fog is rolling in, and this guy is doing everything it can to not precipitate here. But here you have uh, Nick Beaver coming into the pits, along with Evan Hoobjock here. So uh, pit stops a little bit early, but as you said, maybe that is done to give them that appropriate space they need to, uh, you know, blend out and gain some time through that flip-flop process. That could very well be the case here, as we are just at about the halfway point, 13 laps into an estimated 27 um, that should be where we sit here on the evening. But exiting Moss Corner, again, not too much happening up front. Most of these guys pretty well separated. You have Chuck Labano, who is in the top 10 now, and uh, trying to take that title from him is Luke Sedenga there in that 45 there in 11. Yeah, I thought Sedenga was going to make a little bit more progress. It seems like he is kind of stagnated behind Labano. He's done a great job uh, maintaining his position there that number 113 machine but Sedenga had a lot of pace you know we saw him muscling some guys out of the way and moving up the grid and then just kind of stagnating so maybe waiting for a pit sequence to get things rolling and, and makes a little bit more progress up but now we're going to go on board with Kevin Buckles and he is currently running P14 tailing Neil Kemp and see Neil in that gray machine and I love this angle going through the final corner. You can see just how aggressively they're taking it, Corey. Uh, almost a four-wheel slide in the center of that corner because they're just throwing themselves in. Uh, just goes to show how aggressive you got to drive this track. Here's uh, Matt Thompson in the pits, one of our top dogs in the amateur class. And Randall McGrew, he is in a trio of vehicles uh, that is um, sandwiched in between Parrish and Taco Phil there in that eighth spot. And 
Uh, they are straggling roughly about seven, seven and a half seconds behind our leaders. Uh, looks like Reese Gardner, his connection issues have, uh, maybe he has upgraded from the dial-up, maybe to DSL on his way to fiber. Uh, he has cleared it up, and that 94 having his by far the best run of the season on pure pace. Uh, Reese Gardner in fifth, but he has dropped six and a half seconds behind our race leaders. Yeah, it is um, a little bit surprising how far uh, he has fallen back there. I'm also really surprised by Jack Sanchez still being 10 seconds back, ninth place. That is uncharacteristic. Like I said, it's a great position. Anytime you're in the top 10, you're doing really well. But uh, this is a driver with multiple wins on the season. This is a driver who's constantly battling for the lead. Um, just surprising to see. And this separation that we're now seeing also kind of gets me here, Corey. I, I did not oh, expect there it this. Comes. To go down into the pits. 18 minutes to go in the session. Mr. McGrew also in front of him there in the pits. So this is going to truly kick off the pit sequence, I think, among the leaders. Um, but as I was saying, Corey, this separation, I don't think either of us could have predicted this. We thought it was going to be a door banging, uh, as you like to say, physical race. And so far, it seems like we're just breaking up into little packs here as Hero Nam continues to lead the way or so slightly over Solaris. We have two potential crashes to report here. Uh, David Moore. Uh oh. He just had a little self loop de loop here. Coming down, I believe that is in the S's. Yeah, he just lost it by his lonesome. And then we also, oh, first victim of turn number two here on the evening is going to be John Casey. I think he was just exiting the pits. Oh, and that was Dahano oh. too. Yeah, Dan just got a little bit tight through the corner, got to his door in that off camber grass. He kept it off the wall there. That's, uh, that's something that not a lot of drivers can say about that corner. Well, and you know, he's lucky he was just coming out of the pits because I think if he was going at full speed, that would have been disastrous. He would have made it all the way to those tires, but uh, because he wasn't quite up to pace, he was able to get that thing oh. gathered up. Now, here comes the leader, Iro Nam, but Matt Solarsic stays on track. So let's see who's going to cycle out ahead of who here. I could not tell by the way Iro took that last corner if it was his intent to pit or if he just absolutely over blew uh, turn number nine there as a that white vehicle, I believe that's Stefan Price, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, again, kicking up the dust there in Luke Bryan fashion. No, that's not him. That is an identical one to him. I don't know who this one is, but uh, whoever it was, the 107 car, uh, he went a little bit wide there. That is Ryan Bevel. Must be team cars there with those blue striped Mustangs. But then I will see if Matt Solarsic does come into the pits. It's not going to be a tire race, Andre. I'm looking at the best times, last times. Only about a tenth or two off, so it's strictly going to be a fuel race. Uh, Eero Nam has exited the pits and will get a gauge of his fuel situation. 12.7, which I'm trying to remember things, which is very difficult for us, but I feel like that's a lot of fuel comparative to what they've taken in, in races past. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a dramatic situation with the fuel. These drivers were able to go quite a ways before having to pit, so that should offer them the opportunity to, you know, take a little bit of extra fuel, not worry so much about uh, making it to the end. We'll have to see, unless, of course, the calculations were off, and that's something that we have seen discussed in the Discord time and time again, people talking about um, whatever preferred program they use to make their calculations. Sometimes those programs struggle with the Mustangs, and if you're relying solely on that, you're trying to shave off thousands of a second by just taking a little bit less fuel, Sometimes it can come back to bite you, so it's going to be on the drivers to, to get enough fuel to make it to the end. Here comes Luke Sedenga coming in hot into the pits. as that car bouncing around, um, but looks like the majority of the field finally giving way here behind Sedenga. we got another machine. Can't Brand, quite Brandon make Brush, that. that is. So all that. And Slarsic still staying at another lap. Yeah, their Azar ticker will denote. You can see everybody who still says 17 laps um, has yet to pit. So Iro Nam being the highest of those who have already made his stop. And let's take a look at where he is on circuit right now. He is uh, just behind two vehicles that are side by side. And he is going to go sandwich mode. No, he is going to decide not to put, the, uh, put himself in the middle of the sandwich Jonathan. there. Somebody's going off yonder into the uh, tire wall it's, it's there. Golden. Is that golden? I couldn't quite tell. 
I believe so. Uh, I could be wrong. Yeah, but it is. He, <laughs> yeah, I think he got caught a little bit off guard by Eero's aggressive move here. Yeah, he just he, didn't quite get that car back down. Yeah, you can see here, look at that uh, car to the left of your display. He, Yeah, he went wide. He's in the marbles now. And he just got the left sides into the grass. And whew, right in front of traffic there. Luckily, that Good road wall was waiting to strike there. It was not far to go, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, that was just a bit of a racing deal. Obviously, if you are your own arm, you're trying to get around everybody as quickly as you can. You want to cycle out as well as you can versus the competition. But uh, if you're Jonathan Golden, I don't think you expect him to get up to you that fast. It was pretty abrupt and pretty quick. And once you get up in those marbles, you pointed it out, Corey, he got out of that black rubbered up groove into the lighter gray marbles and it's tough to get that thing to turn and you can see the front end just wash out that's when he got to the grass and it was just all she wrote it was all she wrote indeed now andre i gotta do a little bit of mathematics because it's fun especially as poor as i am at it euro nom spent approximately 30 sick 30 seconds 30 seconds in the pits so let's see how far off the lead he's 27 seconds off the lead so my amazingly incorrect mathematics that have never proven to be right says he should be the leader of this race by about three seconds once Solarisic pits. But th this logic, which seems foolproof, has never, ever worked. So um, I don't know why I want to state an incorrect fact, but it's fun. Well, and we do have so much variety in how long the pit stops take. Um, it, it seems like... It's not very uniform. You know, in a NASCAR oh, race, you no. expect to me. No, no solar stick. Oh, buddy, that's some heavy damage. That I is saw heavy, that coming. How, damage. We saw that coming. How did he not see it coming? Yeah, I'm a little bit baffled by this. I need to see the replay because you can see there's a car very slowly coming into pit road. Did he think he was going to fit? Like, where, like, well, where okay, was he going? The car in front did get on the brakes. I don't know what pit road speed limit is. That is um, uh, I don't Weaver. Know if he... So I don't know if Weaver was going beneath pit road speed limit when he hit the brakes there, or if Solarsic was going above pit road speed limit when the contact was made. One of those has to be true. One of them was going e either too fast or too slow. Looking back from Weaver, just coming in hot, and I mean, no effort was made. Uh, to, to slow down. Even if he was going too slow, even if Weaver was going beneath pit road speed limit, you would think you'd get on the brakes pretty quickly to try to match his pace, because now you've got radiator damage, and that is not something that's going to play very well at a track with straightaways this long. You're going to be overheating that engine very quickly if you can't get that fixed up. So uh, that just plays into Eero Nam's hand. Fabian's wire leading the way. He has not pit, I believe, if you could pull that back up and, and see when the last stint was. Uh, yeah, Fabian Zwire, Luis Henriquez, Kevin Parrish, Phil Keck, Ian Lane, these drivers have not pitted. First among those who have, Eero Nam with Reese Gartner back in eight there. So, interesting to see. Oh, and here comes the bunch of sorts that have yet to pit. Zwire, Henriquez, there's Parrish, uh, there's the, the Kexter and Ann Lane. So basically everybody else, uh, the only one still on circuit is Jeff Andrus, but I don't think he's actually gotten to the pits yet. So uh, we would expect him this time by. He's coming through the final S's now. So, uh, and there he goes. So that will conclude our pit cycle. Now we'll just see how everybody fares and blends without much of a surprise there. Eero Nam, as he was about three seconds ahead of, uh, you know, if we omit Solarsic, he was about three seconds ahead of everybody else, and it appears as such that he's going to blend out exactly to that gap, three seconds. So, hey, uh, your math worked out just for the wrong driver, Corey. Yes, it worked out um, with incorrect conditions applying, but I still ended up being right, so I'll take that for what it's worth here. Ste uh, Stefan Price there, and that's Greg Hartman. Um, battling with Brandon Smith a little bit further up. We got that face. And who is that? The 57 of Mike Nikum there. They are uh, snaking and weaving and worming and weaving there down that front straightaway. So Chuck Lomano lost a couple positions through that pit sequence. He dropped down to 14th. He's still first among the amateurs uh, by a good margin. 
but uh, he did lose some time. Oh, in I would say by a good margin. Look at Hosea. Hosea yeah. is right within shot. That is, yeah, Labano is the that first car right up there. So it's within it's slipstream two cars range. Separating them. And uh, you know, again, uh, I, I I knew it. I never lost faith. I knew that Hosea <laughs> was going to get up here. Um, but yeah, he is uh, really working his way through the field. We'll have to see if he can maybe catch up a little bit to Dehan O'Toot there as well as. Oh, you got to worry uh, about Dehan. The field is throwing you off into the grass, as we found. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want to hold that against Dan too much. But yeah, that was a spatial awareness issue for sure earlier. And uh, I'm sure that has been uh, addressed. But in the meantime, we'll see. It's going to be a good battle, I think, for the amateur lead as. Uh, you know, the, Jose has been a little bit quicker over the last few laps. lamano has been going backwards. They might just come together, put on a good show here. Yeah, they may do that just indeed here. But going up front, it seems that we still have some uh, some groupings that, you know, were still grouped uh, prior to the pits, and they have stayed in that configuration in post manner here. You have Henriquez and Zwire. This is now a podium battle. Uh, for second and third there as uh, someone who is getting out of the way and uh, I think that may be uh, Merle Eshman there if I'm not mistaken uh, getting out of the way and uh, the Beaver Mobile where is Nick Beaver on track where where is he he's in 10th this is what this guy does Always. he fin he is just 10 I mean I think he's doing it on purpose if he goes to McDonald's point. he orders a number 10 combo if he buys a scratch ticket he buys 10 of them if he is just 10. That is him. Now you got me wondering what the number 10 at McDonald's actually is, so I'm about to pop Do they do move. combo? It's probably a... No, the chicken The chicken sandwiches are like 9, like they're A, B, and C. I don't even know if it goes to 10 anymore, to be honest. Oh, who is um, someone this one off there? That. Oh, that's Merle Eshman. He's going for 40 tooth. That's what it is. He's going for 40 tooth. He's currently 41st. He needs to lose a lap to John Casey to get 42. So this this is exactly why he just spun himself out. These are the reasons. Okay, so there. Oh, he just made that curb again, just pulling him around. Nothing he could really do. He's gonna bring it down into pit road, and I don't know if he's calling it a night or just getting some of that damage fixed. But here's a side by side battle. Aaron Bray, <laughs> and uh, he is, oh, this might be a three-wide battle if they keep this up down the front straight away into that first right-hander. Oh, we are getting aggressive here, boys. I like this. That is Bray to the outside there, and then you have Nikum and Hartman there. Hartman going, oh, you don't go that far wide because you'll go off in Clayton Corner here if you go too far wide. We saw that. Oh, don't, don't, don't do it. He missed the grass by <laughs> maybe a quarter of an inch. It was a close call, but he was able to keep it on the track. That 141 going to slot into position here. Now going on board with 197, Brandon Smith. And uh, he is tailing this battle that's been going on. We'll see if this stays calm. Maybe they've got this sorted out now that they got that out of their system. Or maybe we go right back into the action. Down to this heavy braking zone. Got a couple of different lines. Brandon Smith gained a lot of time there. Took a great oh, no! line. And we got contact. That's Mike oh, Meekum going around. So we got a front row view to that. Nikum going to have to wait for the field to go by so he can safely rejoin. But now we'll look from the back bumper of Nikum. Under the wing, even. And just coming together and around he goes. Not too much damage, but a lot of time lost. Yeah, we'll go from the top down cam and you can see space, 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 sort of space. It's hard to really fault him on that. I mean... It was kind of there, and sometimes kind of is all you need, uh, especially when it comes to five minutes left to go in the race. And there's kind of a battle going on here. We got Reese Gardner up to fourth now because of the fact that uh, Solarsic is no longer within the festivities here. But Kevin Parrish is trying to take that spot in very um, exciting fashion here. He's going to go to the left side of the track. He's going to go on the outside for the opening corner of the S's. And he's going to hope he can stay there because that'll put him on the correct side of the track for the next side of the S's. Well, and if it does work, he might just bring Phil in tow there. He's got him right behind. They're going to stay side by side. Nope. Looks like Gardner is going to defend the position. 
now into the final corner of the track the right hander they are going to stay side by side but i don't think this battle is over i think reese uh, is a little bit slower than kevin Parrish right now so kevin just looking for an opportunity to get around phil keck as well probably just hoping these guys start the battle maybe he can get a two for one can't use right hand is the super serious track guides guy well uh, hopefully he watched his own track guide because he's <laughs> under attack and a little bit further back or oh, to the back of this little uh, trio of sorts is taco phil there so uh randall mcgrew and jack sanchez there um they are having a battle looks like mcgrew has lost uh, some spots. He was running with Reese Gardner earlier. He's minus two on the day. I know he was running fourth, fifth in that ballpark for the vicinity of the the most part of the race, rather, and uh, currently has dropped a few back. And he's going to go low in Moss Corner Part 1. And look, going wide is Sanchez, but that may actually give him a little bit of momentum there down the straight. Not missing anything up front lead, three and a half seconds. This is the highest and probably the best battle on the track. Kevin Parrish, absolute bump drafting Reese Gardner um, as it looks like these wildfires are getting a little bit more dense. And I'll tell you what, I bet you Reese actually likes that. It's giving him a little bit more speed down the straightaway. Might be beneficial as long as he can keep Parrish behind him. Uh, then that might actually help them close in on the car ahead. Uh, Luis Henriquez, he's about three seconds up the road, so they've got some time to make up. You can see that is the difference you saw. And when, right when we cut to this frame, Luis Henriquez going down the straightaway and then these drivers but look at this kevin parrish now to the inside now if they get to the next set of corners if reese gardner can stay side by side he will have the preferred line Let's see if he can defend it just a little bit longer it's going to be tough no kevin parrish slides in front before they ever even get to the corner and that is going to be one more up on the board for parrish reese gardner gonna have to concede that taco phil watching that maneuver happen maybe taking down notes for what he's going to try to do next lap they're going to stay single file, and this fog is, uh, I, I think we might be racing in Silent Hill. Yeah, I mean, though, it was 94% humidity earlier, and it is up to 97, which basically means it is raining. It, there is there is a fictitious drizzle and moisture, you know, in the air. Like That's literally what happens at this percentage, but it is doing everything but precipitating right now as we're uh, within two minutes left. I don't think we've focused on uh, Jay Bast at all here today. He is just outside of the top uh, 20. He's at the end of the top 20, rather. Uh, that is, uh, who is that? Mike, Matt Thompson, rather, in front of him, along with Hosea. Hosea and Thompson. This is 17th and 18th, uh, but Lobano is uh, pulled away, so that would be the amateur battle. As uh, two minutes left, let's take a look here. Uh, this will be two laps to go here as Eero Nam taking another lap. Looks like the sun has come out now, at least on the front straightaway, that is. And look at Dehano too there, bump drafting down the straightaway onto Evan Hoopchak. Yeah, he is definitely giving him a bit of a shove, and that's been the running theme. We've seen drivers uh, not afraid to put the bumper to somebody down the straightaway, give him a little bit of a shot down into the corner. we got a little bit of connectivity issues there. Out of the number seven machine, that's Evan Hoopchak having some uh, dial-up moments there. Dan Ott just trying to hope that he doesn't rematerialize inside of his cockpit. That would be disastrous. And oh, into the grass. Oh, oh Jay Bass. Hold on to her, Jay. I can't believe he saved that. That was a good piece of driving out of Mr. Pass there. Yep. I cannot believe uh, that thing did not go around. Yeah, he's just that daggum good. And it's, you know, commentator's curse. First time we show him on the evening, uh, he ends up having a small issue. Well, I will say, I mean, for the sake of you know maybe creating drama here i do think oh that's probably what it was i think uh Eero caught some traffic here that's fabian's wire trying to get around two drivers who are battling for position um and that did cost Eero nom about a second or two or for all we know maybe he's having to save fuel we know nom does go uh bare essentials when it comes to the fuel load here and uh, we're going to cross the stripe, take lap number 27 with about 30 seconds on the stopwatch here. Barney will throw that white flag, and uh, I don't think two seconds is going to be overcame unless the fuel issue comes into play, but Eero Nam doing Eero Nam things in dominating fashion here tonight. Well, and with a two-second gap, I think even if he is close on fuel, he can do a little bit of lifting and coasting, uh, and Fabian's still not quite going to get to him quick enough. Uh, Luis Henriquez about five seconds back so the top three probably the most separated at the end of the race that we've seen all year I don't think we've seen a race uh, to this 
margin of separation quite yet, but uh, Kevin Parrish, Reese Gardner still battling for fourth. They're not too far from one another. Uh, Phil Keck as well right behind Reese Gardner. So there is battles going on all over the track. Chuck Labano takes the white flag uh, as the amateur leader at the moment. And again, looks like Hosea has not gotten to him. So uh, he's looking at a very possible amateur class win as we follow along with our race leader racing through Silent Hill here. The fog oh my getting goodness. Yeah, this is just bad. so absurd. Now coming up down the well coming up the Mario and Ready straightaway, both in terms of you know distance and in terms of elevation. You're going up the straightaway into the S is Zero Nam. He had a very close contest with Matt Solarsic. Solarsic had that pit road issue with the slower car and that knocked him out of the race and that put Eero Nam into a uh, class of his own. No competition, just had to not screw up. And of course he did not screw up. What he did was win here in Canada. Eero Nam wins at Mossport. Fabian Zwire never gave up. He closed in a couple more tenths by the time he got to the checkered flag, but it just wasn't going to be enough. And it looks like Reese Gartner is going to hold on to the top five. Phil Keck got alongside, but not quite enough. Now, this is a group of cars battling for position as they've completed their lap. Dan Ott in that 29 machine. He's got Charles Jose right behind him. Oh! Chuck Mano having already finished the race, and oh no, they're wrecking at the line. That's Thompson, the and... Uh... He put it in reverse. He's coming <laughs> to the line. There you oh, go. What is this? Uh, is this Talladega Talking Nights? Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Carl Edwards running to the line. You see contact made there. That's Brandon Brush and Matt Thompson. Jay Bass got a piece of it, and then he... Uh, that blue car as well, and I'm so close. I'm so close. Actually, he's got to thank that green car there because he made this car straighten out to actually allow him to do that. Yeah, they, they, yeah. you got to get to the line one way or another, and they made it happen. So, as the uh, fog descends upon the track, the race has concluded. And you know, the the race for the lead might not have been that exciting, but uh, that was one. Heck of a finish for sure. Hero Nam takes the win by about two seconds over Fabian Zwire. Luis Enriquez with a podium. Kevin Parrish works his way all the way up to fourth late into the event. And Reese Gartner holds on to P5 for what I believe is his best finish of the year. Phil Keck, sixth place. Jack Sanchez works his way up to seventh. And you got Randall McGrew, Nick Beaver, and oh no! Nick Beaver finishes ninth. He ruined the streak. Because P10 goes to Luke Sedenga. How dare he better his position? He's now a failure in a positive right? way. Neil Kemp gets an 11th. <laughs> Ian Lane in the Pizza Mobile in 12th. Chuck Labano, the leader of the AM class, in the 13th spot with Dehan, Dehan O'Toole in 14th. Charles Hosea, second in class, gets a 15th. We got Jay Bast in 16th. He was in that last lap folly there at the start finish. And then Hoopchuk, Sanchinelli, Matt Thompson, and Brandon Brush. I think he finished backwards, if I'm not mistaken, in 20th. And you got Mark Royce, Jay Little, Matthew Guzenda, Jeff Andrus, Antoine Saredski, Aaron Bright, Greg Hartman, Brandon Smith, Dave Blair, P29. Running out of the top 30 is going to be Stefan Price. All right. And then 31st through 40th, find Scott Brooks, Levi Powell in 32nd, David Moore in 33rd, Adam Freese 44th, and 34th rather, Ken Estep in 35th. And then we have Ryan Bevel, Kevin Buckholz, Greg Brockway in 38th, Tom Went, and then Mike Neekham. He had some issues. And he finishes in 40th. And just to round out our last page, John Casey, Freddie Weaver, he was involved in that pit incident, but he did get the 42th award here if he wants to talk to us. Merle Eshman, Matt Solarsic, that was a heartbreak, but kind of a confusing situation in 44th. Thompson Golden and Matt Malone out very early, shotgun on the field. Well, I will give you the blessing of the winner here today, Andre, if you don't mind that. And uh, can have a brief word with Mr. Eero Dom. Mr. Nam, you got a copy? Yep. Well, Euro, that was probably your most comfortable win of the year. You had quite a good gap back to second place, and it seemed like you were able to just to lock in on those last few laps, hit your marks, and almost take it easy. At least you made it look easy. How did it feel behind the wheel? Yeah, at that point, I already had uh, four, four laps on my tires, so I was a little bit slower, but yeah, uh, it was pretty big league, uh, lead with four seconds. So. I didn't believe it before the pit stop because everybody was saving fuel behind me. So, yeah, it was a little bit surprised to come out so far, right? 
Yeah, we had uh, the second place uh, when he came down pit road, had a bit of an issue there, which uh, really made your life a little bit easier once everything cycled out. You got the lead, had a good gap. Now, um, this track, I know you're not a big fan of drafting tracks. You're a fan of technical tracks, and uh, this track is pretty technical. How do you how do you like being behind the wheel here at Mossport? Yeah, it's still quite a bit draft, but uh, it's hard to pass here. You have to go side by side pretty hard, uh, and yeah. I knew I had speed uh, from the practice uh, Sunday, so I just uh, wanted to get the lead uh, even if the others were saving fuel and uh, before the stops I was able to drop the third and fourth place, so I knew it, at, at least I will get second place, so that was enough. Yeah, at this point, just getting good points days. You got a good points lead going for you, heading into, uh, you know, getting a little bit later into the season. So is the mentality now just kind of maintain that points lead, maintain the gap and focus on good finishes rather than wins? Yeah, it's so hard, uh, even if the quality was, has been yeah, easy this week, but uh, it's so close. So if you miss a little bit, like I did on my quality lap number two, so yeah, I had to put together the third lap, uh, but yeah. Just have to practice a little bit and yeah, let's see. Practice does make perfect. Well, Eero, thank you for your time. Congratulations on the win. We'll be seeing you next week. Yeah, thanks guys. All right, Corey, whoever you want to pull in next, go ahead and grab All it. Right. But that was race winner, Eero. <clears throat> well, we do not have Fabian, but we can go to our, uh, our top of our amateur division here. And Chuck Labano, again, another amateur class win in, in a very foggy Mossport here, which is very awkward to see. But uh, you were kind of the class of the field in the AM class, which is not too much of a surprise. You're always up there. But towards the end, Charles, Dan, Jay, they made it difficult and uh, nearly took that class win away from you. What was that battle in like? Yeah, I uh, I was struggling most of the week. Um, and I just kind of made some adjustments thanks to, to Matt Thompson and it just clicked um not to mention this is my home track so i kind of feel obligated to represent uh the issue i had i should have been much further ahead but uh, crew chief keeps filling up my car wow. so i got a full load of fuel on my pit stop well, so maybe... that dropped me down a little bit or else i'd be a little further ahead yeah maybe you'll have to go and uh just do the manual work next week but that's also a risk because we don't know how manual work does we always end up screwing it up but if you think of uh, yeah. where we go next week, it's very rare that we kind of do two very similar tracks in short order. But if I had to take a twin to this track, I would say Brands Hatch is probably right up there with a very similar layout, similar flow. So does having a great run here give you confidence heading to next week's race? Well, it always does until I get to next week's race. <laughs> and then all I have to then all I have to worry about is I, I like Brands Hatch. It's pretty good. Um, as long as it's not a sprint race and we're all not going to get taken out in the first lap, I should do okay. Well, as long as you're not in the heat of the battle here, but the season is coming to a close, and I'll tell you that the tracks are more difficult. You know, on top of Brands Hatch, we got a Laguna Seca and Bathurst, so uh, you probably don't oh, want to. Yeah. And I got to worry about Charles, man. He is catching up. There's five of us in the in the hunt for the uh, the amateur championship here so it's going to be tight all the way to the end yeah well you'll have to find that magic sauce here and add the icing to the amateur cake because you, you got it but you just got to finish it off man congrats and we'll see what you can do next week awesome hopefully we'll see you next week hopefully so all right, all right and then our oh, well your favorite it's your favorite driver andre we'll go ahead and give you mr hosia <laughs> Hey, hey. How you doing, Jose? Well, you, you qualified a little bit further back than uh, you did last week, but you worked your way forward. And at the end of it, you were kind of battling there with uh, Mr. Lomano for the amateur win. Tell me a little bit about your uh, race and how you worked your way forward. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, this track, obviously, qualifying is hugely important and uh, just couldn't put one lap down. So I had to start, as you said, from the back. And honestly, just was uh, steady and smooth. And it seemed like there was... A few big wrecks there, because uh, I don't know how I ended up kind of where I did, to be honest with you. But uh, Matt was fighting me hard all day behind me and didn't have enough to reach Chuck, but still big points today. Yeah, it's a great points day. And, and again, uh, Mr. Bono was talking about how close that points battle is becoming. I think you got him sweating a little bit, Charles. You, you mentioned you by name, said that uh, you're coming up there. So uh, we'll have to see what uh, happens next week at Brands Hatch. But uh, as for this week, 
you mentioned the, the big crashes and, and the things that you kind of had to work your way around. This track seemed pretty tough. A lot of these drivers were making mistakes we don't normally see them uh, make. So how did you feel about Mossport here? Were you kind of comfortable behind the wheel or were you kind of feeling the pressure? Yeah, no, race pace wise, uh, it felt pretty comfortable. I think as long as you uh, hit your apexes here and don't go offline, uh, you'll be all right. You know, turn two, I guess it is, you know, down the big sweeping left hander there. Uh, if you get off to the right there, just in the marbles, just a little bit, it punishes you real bad. So you lose all your momentum. But uh, yeah, no, it felt pretty good. Looking forward to Brands Hatch, though. Yeah, Brands Hatch is going to be kind of similar to this, so I think you're going to have a good chance there if you, if you ran so well here. Uh, what's your experience with Brands Hatch? Not a lot. I don't know if that's for most here at iRacers, but it doesn't seem like Brands Hatch is a track that a lot of us get a lot of, you know, seat time at, so have to put in some practice. Yeah, it is one of those tracks a lot of the official series don't tend to venture to, so uh, it may be a gray area, but that could be an advantage because, you know, some of the other competitors may also be just as in the dark, so if you get it figured out, you can get uh, a good finish out of it. And again, this amateur points battle has been really fun to watch, and we wish you the best of luck next week. Thanks. Awesome job, guys. Can't wait. See ya. All right, that is P2 in the amateur division out of the booth. And that's a good point that he made there, Corey. Brands Hatch, you know, not a track they go to very often. So uh, next week could be something. Yeah, and it's old and ugly, but we do have our 42th award here, Freddie Weaver. Um, well, first off, you haven't been qualifying last the past few weeks, so I do want to give you props on that. The Q department has been improved, but uh, we got to talk about the elephant in the room, man. What happened in the pit entry there with uh, Solarsic? Hey, hello. I think Solarsic hit him so hard it broke his radio. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and give him the award, and we gave him the, we gave it the college try. We wanted the juicy deets. I mean, even though he didn't, he was just driving on in there, so I mean, he wouldn't really know too much. But yeah, I think he was just about as blindsided as we were, quite frankly. But well, uh, we'll give it one more chance, Mr. Weaver. You got a copy? All right, it would seem not. Well, we done tried, so that's all we can do. So either way, he gets that 42th award here on the evening. And uh, I guess we'll go and wrap things up here from a rather foggy Bowmanville, Ontario, Canada. Again, congratulations to Eero Nam on his victory here tonight. Make sure you stay tuned for Thursday night where we have double duty with eCar and Red Sox Racing League. That'll be our Thursday night and then Saturday with our SSRL Master Series at IRP. That's going to be Corey and Andre signing out of the booth. Have a great night and we'll catch you next time.